Welcome to another Experts Talks. In the last episode, we spoke to Lee Gilbert about condition monitoring products for transmission and distribution assets. Today, we have with us Mr. Lauren van Groningen, who is a product lifecycle manager for system integration for condition monitoring. Welcome, Lauren. Hi, Jaron. Hi. How does system integration for condition monitoring products work? Well, let me explain a bit about that. If we talk about system integration, we often think about operational technologies like SCADA systems, substation automation and so on. If we are watching to condition monitoring, it has its own challenges. The uh, reason is it can't be integrated directly in the operational technologies in, in many cases. reason can be, for example, that uh, the SCADA systems are certified or the substation automation, so it can't be changed. Or another reason can be that the data networks are not prepared for condition monitoring data. So, as I said, condition monitoring has their own challenges. Now, for that reason, um, what we actually do is we have a solution that is completely independent on the one hand as a standalone, but on the other hand it can also be fully integrated into the system. Okay, but how is it possible to have a fully integrated system and also something that's standalone? Yes, so let me explain with, with the next picture I show you. What we see here is at the bottom line we see ICON. ICON is the synonym for the condition monitoring products in the field. In this picture now you see that it is integrated into the substation automation and control and the SCADA, so the classical operational technologies. But as I explained before, this is not always possible. So what we do is we build in parallel, we build a second track, which is going up to a substation monitoring, to a center monitoring, and finally, as you see also, to the grid asset management. Now this is a complete, separate, independent standalone system. But what we can do is we now can make the connection links between them and finally integrate it up to the end. Will both standalone and totally integrated solutions exist in the future? Well, I'm sure that for the first years to come, they will exist beside each other. The uh, reason is that customer networks also doesn't change overnight. It's a long-term process that that happens. But if we more look into the long term, then finally what we will probably see is that the information technology and operational technology will merge together to one system. And by the way, um, the solution I so showed to you is actually already prepared for that. Right, so can you monitor everything regarding the asset's health? Um, yes, it would be possible to monitor everything, but the more important question is probably is um, what to monitor and to focus on the risk. So that I think is even more important. So the focus should not be on monitor everything. Um, it's more important to use this data in a proper way. And that's what we call asset data management. And that is making the, the data available for the next step. Right, and can you give me an example of how you use this data? Well, I think it's good to give an example uh, of how you can use the data, but first explain with another example. Mm -hmm. Customers probably recognize a situation where condition monitoring is implemented. That means a sensor is placed at the transformer at a high voltage GIS switch gear. And finally, it is implemented, but it isn't used. And the reason is that nobody was responsible for this data. Maybe this is a little bit uh, provocative, uh, but I think that some of the watchers will recognize this situation out of the past. Okay, then what would you recommend the customer to do in such a situation? Well, the most important is to bring this data from the condition monitoring products to the next level, the next step. So this is what we call this asset data management, to bring this data in a central center where mm -hmm. it is available for further use. Then if this data is available, somebody should be responsible for it. And it can be that the person now responsible for switching activities and, and the daily operation of the grid is not the right person, but that somebody responsible for 
uh, the performance of the assets and early recognition, recognition of failures is the right person to manage this data. And um, by the way, if the customer is not able to do this, there is also the possibility to uh, let this be performed by Siemens. Um, the data can be collected in, in the operation center uh, or can also be made available uh, worldwide at any place and of course protected and secured. And uh, do you see any new opportunities in creating uh, a centrally located place for all this data? Yes, actually there is. So if this data, and I will stress on usable data, is available, then you can make the next step to asset performance management. So what you can do is you can plan the long-term performance of the assets also with input on the data collected. One example on that, but not going too far into detail, is that if you have one time an alarm on the condition, it doesn't mean that the asset has become, um, that you can't use it anymore. It actually means that something has to be repaired. But if this alarm is popping up over and over again, it's probably an indication that the, the condition of the asset is not that good as planned before. So the performance in the long run is not that good as planned. All right, I think I have a basic understanding of asset performance management, so thank you for that. And You're thank welcome. you, Lauren, in general, for this expert talks today, and I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you very much. In summary, the importance is not just placed on condition monitoring itself, but rather the proper use of the data gained from it, which opens up possibilities to better predict the transmission and distribution assets performance.